Do you feel the calling to help the world heal in these times of uncertainty from violence and trauma using powerful spiritual tools combined with action? Do you want to shift your personal and our collective destiny lines from war, oppression, and genocide into peace? If so, I warmly welcome you here today. This is Destiny Lines, Sacred Activism for Peacemaking and Ending Violence. My name is Rachel Mann, PhD. I am a sacred activist, social scientist, shamanic healer, and spiritual mentor. Come learn from my stories, experiences, and research, as well as from those of visionary thought leaders who are working on the spiritual frontiers of sacred activism to end violence. I invite you to step up with me into this extremely important work. Find out how it is part of the fulfillment of your unique mission and purpose in life. Let's go. There's no time to lose. Welcome to the first podcast of Destiny Lines, in which I, Rachel Mann, PhD, your host, along with my amazing guests, will explore the topic of sacred activism for peacemaking and ending violence. I am very excited to be launching reflection and discussion on this extremely timely and important topic to educate you about why understanding Destiny Lines is so critical as Humanity faces many threats during these both perilous and promising times, and as we seek to dream forth a world into being of unity in diversity and a sustainable peace for future generations. But first, I want to start with sharing with you a personal story that will elucidate why I am so passionate about peacemaking and ending violence. It will also help you understand a bit about how destiny lines work on an individual level. In a later podcast, I will take a deeper dive into group destiny lines. Now, it may seem strange to say this, but I consider myself a survivor of the Vietnam War. Born in 1961, I was raised suckling at the teat of the nightly news where the daily numbers of dead and wounded were reported, along with photographs and some video, of the battlefield. How insane that children would be exposed to such fodder. Secondary traumatic stress is a real thing, meaning that a person can be traumatized just by witnessing a tragic event, even if it is through the media. But you know what? No matter how hard it was on me as a child, I am so glad that I was. Yes, it caused me anguish. As I watched in my inner ear, I could hear the guns and bombs and in my inner sight see the blood and body parts. In my own body, I could feel the suffering of the soldiers, the wounded men and civilians. I was the terrorized woman and child captured in the gory march of battle. I imagined the pain and fear endured by the animals in the jungles, how they were surely traumatized, wounded, and killed by virtue of proximity. To me, it seemed very simple. Human beings did not need to do this to one another or the planet. They should not. What were the origins of this easy internalization of the pain of war? Did it come at birth from other lives? As a small child, the answers to these questions were still far out of my reach. Nevertheless, on a fundamental level, my direct lived experience of a deep capacity for feeling others' pain made no sense. But this concern did not leave me when the Vietnam War ended, nor when I grew up. It left an indelible impression and persisted. Ultimately, it became part of my lifelong work as a sacred activist, social scientist, healer, and spiritual mentor. It was part of the destiny line my soul had mapped out for me. Starting in my teens, I became passionately engaged in trying to figure out the inner workings of violence, the psychology and soul of it, 
I started with fiction. In my sophomore year of high school, I chose to write a book report on a novel by Russian writer Alexander Solzhenitsyn entitled One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich. It chronicles the grueling misery and cruelties suffered by a man named Shukov in a Siberian concentration camp under the oppressive Stalinist regime. Reading this led me to other works by Solzhenitsyn, who himself fought in the trenches of World War II and who later was targeted by Stalin, the autocratic authoritarian dictator, as an enemy and sent to the Gulag. From there, I went on to get a BA in Russian studies and an MA in Soviet studies. Eventually, I completed a PhD in Slavic languages and literatures, although my areas of focus were in the fields of folklore and anthropology, I was indeed a social scientist. The trajectory of my degrees were evidence of how I moved from the domains of politics and international affairs into the dimensions of human culture and self-expression. Throughout those 11 years of my education, during the height and ultimately the end of the Cold War, I was invested in being part of bringing the threat of nuclear annihilation to an end through cross-cultural understanding and forging human bonds of affection. What did I learn? That ending war or the threat of war or bringing an end to authoritarianism and violence and ultimately reaching the goal of peace is not just about politics or even psychology or any of the usual mainstream Western approaches. It is also about soul and spirit. This is what I want to bring to this deep topic of peacemaking and ending violence. Now, let me acknowledge up front that talking about violence can be scary, even triggering. But in order to usher our world into greater peace, we must speak about present and past realities. This is also a part of the path of healing. Shining the light on what has been and what is with storytelling and truth-telling will ultimately shift our collective destiny lines away from violence towards peace. So what are destiny lines anyway, you might ask? I ask you to reflect for a moment on the trajectory of your life from your conception to the present day, as well as on where you believe or wish to see your future going. This is an experiment just so that you can begin to understand a bit how destiny lines work. You might notice as you reflect on the past that there were certain critical choice points where you could have gone down one path or another. One path may have led you in a more so-called negative direction or difficult, challenging direction. Another path may have led you to something less challenging. And then if you look with the bird's eye view, in a dispassionate yet compassionate way, you in fact might realize that you're here today listening to this podcast precisely because the choices you made were leading you to the fulfillment of your highest mission and destiny in life to serve others and to be part of this great wave of creating a future of peace, harmony, balance, and compassion. So I'm going to give you a moment just to do this reflection. You might even take a pen and paper and draw a line from past to present, noting those choice points, and then with that line going beyond the present to that future creative life and peaceful world that you want to contribute to. Welcome back. How did that exploration go? Were you able, just for a moment, to see the unfolding of your personal destiny line from birth to your potential future as a roadway with some twists and turns, eddies and bursts, and even a gradually upward trajectory towards your highest possible destiny? Did you sense, based on your past choices and present dreams and past traumas and challenges, how the way to your future could be either one way or another, as if there are a number of possibilities. 
Destiny lines are indeed energetic pathways of light along which an individual, family, community, nation, or planet travels from the dimension of the soul, the higher self, at the moment of birth and on into this physical space-time continuum, and from there into the present and towards the future. This is not the same as fate. Fate implies a future that is unchangeable over which you have no control. Rather, destiny is eminently malleable because once you emerge from the think tank and womb of the soul, you, as for all of us, have free will. The soul exists as the greater dimension of consciousness, as an individualized presence created out of the oneness of spirit matter, it holds all the experiences, memories, dreams, and intentions in the creative exploration of manifestation in multiple forms and multiple dimensions. In a place that is an incubator of souls, decisions are made about the type of life or lives it will explore and evolve through, as well as what experiences it will have. But this does not happen in a vacuum. At the same time, soul groups also decide how their lives and experiences will be interlinked. We are all connected. We are also all seeking to dissolve separation consciousness and return to oneness, the oneness of spirit. So you might say that your life arises out of the deep creativity of the soul as it guides you through your life. The same is true for a family, community, nation, and humanity as a whole. Now, birth for a person can be pinpointed at the moment they emerge in full from their mother's body. Birth for a particular group or nation can be determined by such things as the first time they form together under a single identity and or within a certain framework or within a particular ge geography. In such stories, it can be a moment when they are birthed from the stars or created by a treaty. Every nation, culture, tribe, and group has its origin story, often connected to a particular moment and event in calendrical time. Once the decision is made to incarnate and certain conditions are met, a powerful energy begins to form and develop until the moment there is a readiness for the seed of light and inspiration to merge within a physical form in the intersection of linear time and space. A great momentum builds into a vortex of light out of which then shoot pathways towards multiple possible and probable destiny lines. Imagine it like a firework. Someone with knowledge about how specific metals ignite and at what temperatures certain colors and trajectories will result put these shavings in a canister at the bottom of which is gunpowder. Several of these are then put in a long container at the bottom of which is more gunpowder, enough to push them high, high, high up into the sky. So then the fuse is lit, fire, which then creates heat at the bottom of the large canister that pushes the smaller ones up and out. As they rise up into the sky, the gunpowder within the latter containers heats up and explodes the sh shards of metal and sends shooting lines of color and light into multiple possible formations. What a sight! Part of what we enjoy about fireworks is the display of incredible creativity and beauty, how no one firework is the same. On a deep, unconscious level, it reminds us of where we come from and what our potential is. And there is also an awareness of that edge of danger and adventure that is an integral part of life, for certainly with fire and metal, much could go wrong, and yet most of the time everything goes right. Today, we are living at a critical moment when war still rages and the will to authoritarianism is on the rise and religious, ethnic, and racial hatred is being given license, and when there are more and more random mass shootings and where there continues to be wholesale genocide of whole groups and when violent rhetoric and action against so-called enemies is increasingly accepted. It is as if the dam holding back this deep tidal wave of fear and cruelty arising out of separation consciousness has broken so that we can no longer deny its existence and the need to address it directly, 
courageously, and even radically. Humanity thus has a potent soul choice to make right now. Do we continue to fuel the appearances of separation and division amongst us and against our beautiful Earth Mother? Do we deny the truth of history and the fact of the transgenerational traumatic effects of slavery, genocide, war, and oppression, and their downstream impact on individuals and families and communities in rampant mental and physical illnesses, addictions, sexual assault, and all forms of abuse from physical to mental, emotional, and even spiritual? Do we refuse to call out racism, sexism, homo and transphobia, and the violation of human rights? Do we passively go along with the all-too-easy path towards war rather than seeking out more peaceful solutions? Do we not challenge the ways old systems established during times of deep fear and cruelty perpetuate this state of affairs? I do not. In my spiritual way, which is the luminous integration of my 30 years of study of the wisdom and practices of Buddhism, Native American spirituality of both North and South America, and of the growing spiritual healing and therapeutic movement that I have studied called Western shamanism, living in a sacred way means that as I am in the body and with the body, as I walk in form on this precious planet as a soul and spirit in human form, so, I am responsible for addressing the pain and suffering of all. My calling is not to run away, but rather to run towards. This is the path of the Bodhisattva, those who have made a vow to return lifetime after lifetime until all beings are free, no matter the pain and suffering that we experience in human form. It is my conviction that unhealed, untransmuted trauma lies at the root of our collective dis-ease. We are called to become more focused on the transmutation and healing of the wounds of violence both, both personally and collectively. Wherever there is an act or condition of harm and hurt, we can choose to engage consciously and deliberately with this shadow as a powerful means to ending violence for once and for all, and to creating a planet of peace. To do this sacred work, however, we can no longer think that only mainstream political, societal, psychological, and medical solutions are enough. We must also engage with the mystical and energetic dimensions of reality that are right at our fingertips. We need to address multidimensional levels of human experience and consciousness, body-mind emotions, soul, and spirit. Spiritual practices, tools, and wisdom about how to expand consciousness, heal wounds, and build the fires of compassion and love must also be brought to this pressing work. We must think creatively and radically out of the box. We come from the stuff of starlight, the matter of spirit, and from there I believe we are inevitably traveling into a higher possible future the destination is guaranteed. The only question is when. Understanding destiny lines, we can begin to find the answers to when. We can begin to magnetize that hopeful future of a world of peace, and we can magnetize it much sooner than if we sit and continue to wait and see if only mainstream approaches will work. This is the sacred work of sacred activism for peacemaking and ending violence. Thus, I call you to the sacred work of sacred activism for peacemaking and ending violence. I am here to tell you that you have a choice, that we all have a choice, and that each of us individually can have a very positive and potent effect on the trajectory of the future. Do you want to simply be inspired and find hope in these tumultuous and chaotic times? Are you seeking to understand better your mission and purpose to be of service in helping others find peace? Do you feel a calling to merge the wisdom, knowledge, and tools you've learned through your personal healing journey and spiritual study into a new or already existing therapeutic healing or counseling practice? Do you want to start up a spiritually and socially conscious business, nonprofit, or NGO? Do you have a creative project, such as a spiritually inspiring or socially impactful book 
or body of artistic work? Are you part of an organization that wants to embrace and or anchor more deeply into the sacred values of positive inclusiveness, compassion, and a renewed, caring spiritual ethics? All of these dreams are part of our collective calling from spirit and soul. Your ancestors are asking you and thousands of others to steer humanity towards its highest expression in love, compassion, and peace. When you join my guests and me in this series called Destiny Lines, you will be part of a great movement to harness humanity's and the planet's highest potential for peace. You will be contributing to the complete end of violence. I look forward to you joining me and us. Let's get started. There's no time to lose. Thank you for joining me, Rachel Mann, PhD, your host of this powerful podcast series, Destiny Lines, Sacred Activism for Peacemaking and Ending Violence. I hope you have been inspired into manifesting your dream for yourself personally or for or within your organization to dream forth a world of compassion, love, and peace. If you would like to find out more about me and my work, you may go to my website at rachelmanphd.com or email me at rachelmanphd at gmail.com. I offer individual energy healing sessions, a three-month mentoring program for individuals wishing to magnetize their sacred service to the world, as well as programs, retreats, and classes for individuals and organizations who are inspired by the mission of sacred activism for peacemaking and ending violence. I look forward to you joining me and to hearing from you. Let's get started. There's no time to lose.